Okay, so welcome everybody. We are continuing with uh, chapter 36. We started off yesterday. Today's, today would be the second essay of uh, chapter 36 in Likut HaMorim. And uh, we ended off yesterday. The takeaway from yesterday's um, Tanya was um, understanding the purpose of creation. Um, and understanding the purpose of creation will help you understand your purpose. The Midrash uh, tells us that the purpose of creation, that God desires to have a dwelling place in the lowest realms in this world, and that God desires that you make from a world that looks so ungodly to make it uh, more refined, more godly, and uh, to make it a place that uh, God can call it home. So today's uh, Tanya for the 22nd day of Adar, Wednesday. In today's lesson, the perfect messianic state of existence. That's what we all. Uh, that's what we all waiting for. A uh, perfect messianic state of existence, where godliness permeates all reality, was temporarily manifest at the giving of the Torah. Meaning that they had a, a type of revelation, a similar type of revelation at the giving of the Torah. Um, for it is through Torah's light that this is achieved. So if we can tap into Torah light, we can achieve a messianic state of existence. And the Hebrew Vigam Kvav Oyol Elohim Einzeh Bishas Matan Torah. This was already existed in the time of Matan Torah. A glimmer of it. Kidichtiv, um, the Pasuk says in the Deuteronomy, Ato Reisa Vadas Ki Avayu Elohim Ein Oid Milvadeh. And it is written, you, God, revealed yourself, that we may know that God is the Lord. There is nothing else beside Him. It says, Oreso, you literally showed it in Re'iya which, which means in perceptible physical sight. That they literally were able to see. Um, as, as the post says, the entire nation were able, were able to see the sounds. And so it says it is written, all people saw the thunder. They saw what is normally heard. And the rabbis explain, they looked at the east and they heard the Dibu saying, I am Hashem your God. They looked to every corner of the world. They heard the sound, I am Hashem, your God. They explain, That from every corner they looked, they heard, they heard, they saw the same sound. There, there was no place from which he did not speak to them. This was because in the Ten Commandments, his Hashem's, Will was revealed. Since they, the Ten Commandments, comprise the entire Torah within the Ten Commandments, which represents the inner aspect of His will and wisdom, where there is no concealment of the countenance whatsoever. With the countenance of your face, you gave us Teras Chaim, you gave us Torah of life. So, so far, the summary of the above is the Torah represents the light of his countenance, the inner light of God, the inner light of godliness. When this light was revealed through the uttering of the Ten Commandments, the entire world experienced messianic state, a revelation of godliness. And therefore the Jews who stood at Mount Sinai were nullified out of existence. As the rabbis have interpreted or explained, for every utterance that they heard, their neshama expired. Their soul took flight from their body. Ella. So what happened? Hashem restored, resurrected their soul. He used the do that he's going to use for the resurrection of the dead. The same, the same do was used at the at Matan Torah. 
And what is this do? It's called the do of Torah. That the Torah is called oiz, power, a boldness, which is called might. The Torah provides a strength that enables us to receive divine revelation. Without dissolving out of existence, as explained above, in reference to the reward for tzaddikim. Uh, in the world to come. We learned before that the that since the tzaddikim are learning Torah, so therefore they have a tremendous power to, to handle the revelations that they are going to experience in the world to come. Our sages remark, whoever is engaged in the learning of Torah, the do of Torah gives him life. Mechayel resurrects him, revives him. But afterwards, the, the sin have created damage. But afterward, the Torah was given. After the Torah was given, their sin caused both them and the world to become gross again, to become more uh, coarse, until the end of days when God, um, God's right hand, meaning both days and right, his power will be revealed. That's the meaning of Ketz Hayomin. Hayomin, the um, right hand and the concept of his um, right hand and his power will be revealed. Sha'az is Dakir Gashmu Saguf. At that point, the coarseness of the body will be refined. Ve'olam, and the coarseness of the world will be refined, and they will be capable of receiving the light of Hashem. Be able to handle this radiance, this revelation. Surely, it will radiate to the Jewish people through the Torah that is called might. The Torah is always might. And now from the, the surplus of light that, will, that the Jewish people will endure, the nations of the world will benefit from it mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Super bound, uh, boundness of light, meaning the tremendous abundance, super abundance of light, which will shine upon the Jewish people. The darkness of the nations will also lit up. So everyone is going to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. As the Pasuk says, a prophecy in Yeshaya, it says, The nation will follow you light. Like the famous saying, light to the nations, the nations will walk by your light. Mm -hmm. Another uh, postage in, in Ishaya, where it says that the uh, house of, Ye of, of, J of Yaakov, the house of Jacob, go and we will walk along by the light of God. Another pasuk in Yeshaya, it says, The glory of God shall be revealed, and all flesh will be able to see godliness. All flesh. Another pasuk in Yeshaya, which describes to enter the holes of the rocks and clefts of the, of the boulders for fear of God and His, majest His majestic glory, meaning that the godliness will be revealed, and that's why we we'll create such a tumult in the world, that even those who uh, will see the the majestic the majesty of God will be will hide, mm -hmm. and this refers to the nations who will be filled with dread of God, for it cannot be said of uh, of Israel, who will be one with Hashem, and they will seek, um, and they will seek refuge from. They will not seek refuge from. So when it comes to the nations of the world, they will seek refuge. Mm -hmm. They don't have the Torah. They don't have the might that we have. When it comes to the Jewish people, we will be able to handle it. Mm -hmm. We would not seek for refuge. <laughs> we say in the davening of the high, the high holidays, so that um, appear in, in the majestic splendor of your might over all the inhabitants of the world, including the other nations. So we see that in the Messianic era, godliness will be revealed to all the nations of the world. And in this state lies the fulfillment of the purpose for which this world was created. 
in today's, the takeaway from today's Tanya, uh, consider what transpired when God gave the Torah at Mount Sinai. For the Israelites saw the divine sound, that which is usually heard, they saw the divine sound. The divine voice was coming from all corners of the world. And this is an example of a physical world that does not conceal God, infinite energy. This is the power of your Torah learning. We'll continue with uh, another segment of Daily Parsha and Geula and En Yaakov.